Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Hi everyone. So in the last video, we talked about trying to figure out a way to determine if two numbers have a different sign. The reason we wanted to do this is because we want to try to find an approximation. And as we mentioned the last time, in a parabola, the only way that a that we can hit into a root between two numbers is if it goes from negative to positive or positive to negative around those numbers. So we mentioned if we end up skipping over the actual root, how are we going to figure out that number? the numbers that we skipped between are close to the true root? Right. If we, if, how do we figure out if we skipped over it? And the way we'll figure that out is looking to see if these two things have different signs at one step compared to the next. So, for instance, if we were going at steps of two, so zero to two, then two to four, then four to six, the way that we would know that the true root is somewhere between four and six is by seeing that the the value at four is negative and the value at six, although you can't see it here, is positive. That tells us that. The root, the true root, has to be between those two numbers. Okay, so that's the logic that we're going to use to try to find an approximate answer at a given step size that we're walking at. So here it would be at two, but uh, we're, we're really looking at point one in this example, right? So the first step of that is trying to figure out if two numbers have different signs, and we were able to do that with this kind of logic up here using the absolute value function. And basically, using this absolute value is equal to itself, you could tell if a number is positive or negative. And then we use whether that result for two particular numbers are equal to one another to determine if they have the same sign. In this case, it's not our two numbers the same sign, but now our two numbers are the two numbers different signs. And this is what we're going to come up with. So here we have a is equal to three, b is equal to two, and this comes out as false. But if you make one of them negative, this is going to come out to be true. So we solved the first part of this, right? The second part is having a memory in this function. So what I was talking about here is we're going to be going along and we want to keep track of what happened in the last value. Basically, what was the last number? So here, if I wanted to check, I would be at one and I would say, okay, the last number was negative four when I'm at two. And then when I'm at two, I want to know, okay, the last number was negative 3.8, let's say. I want to keep track of what happened last so I could tell if it went from negative to positive or positive to negative, right? So uh, I already know how to do that, but I need to know to, to need to keep track of what happened at the last at the last step, right? So what I'm going to do this is I'm going to set a variable last value equal to zero. I'm going to initialize it at zero and I'm going to the reason I'm going to do this is this variable is going to represent what happened at the last step. So Right now, I'm going through this entire process. I calculate the function, and if the function is equal to zero, I perform this logic. And right now, nothing's happening because um, because there is no exact solution to this. We want an approximate solution, at least not with these intervals. Instead of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say else, if it's not equal to zero, I'm going to do, this, or actually, instead of doing any of this, at the very end of this, I'm going to say last value is equal to fun. Now, what is this going to do? This is actually going to keep track of the last value. And this might not be very obvious right away, but if I were to print out fun, sorry, if I go here and I print out fun and then print out new value and then print last value and I print out last value. If I run this, I'm just going to run it to show you what this is going to do is it's actually going to keep track of the last value. The way it does this is at the very end of the loop, after it's finished with a number, it just stores the value of this function of fun, this equation, into last value. Then when it goes back around, it's going to calculate it for fun, but last value will still be the thing that happened last. To see how this actually works in action, we're going to look here. The first, When you first initialize it, the first time you go through this, last value is going to be equal to zero. The reason we want this is because if we didn't have it equal to anything here, this wouldn't work, right? We wouldn't be able to print out the value here. Now, every time we go through this, we're going to print out the new value and the last value. The first time, the new value is 1.75. That's this calculated at zero, 
right? Then the next time, the new value is 1.26. That's this calculated at 0.1. And the last value was what happened last time, which is 1.75, right? But keep, it kept track of the last time it was at 1.75 so that it could be used in this next value. And it will keep doing this. So uh, we go to the next value is 0.79, and the last value is 1.26, which was the, the new value last time. So every time it goes through this, it's going to store the new result in this value called last value. And then when it comes back to the top of the loop, it will overwrite it. This is how this is going to work. And this is going to give our loop a bit of a memory where it will remember what happened in the last iteration of the loop. And that's all we need to know. That's all we need to remember. Um, so now that we're remembering this value, we have the two parts of this puzzle, right? We have the last value of hours of math. We have the new value, the value that we're checking against, and we know how to check if two numbers have different signs. So using that information, we will now be, we now should be able to tell, um, get an approximate solution if that number changes signs, right? So right now we're just returning, we're printing this out if the function is equal to zero. But what we want to do is we want to add something to this. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to add this information uh, to our loop. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use this figure out a way to determine if two numbers have different signs. So we're going to use this with this last value and the the fun the the new value right new value last value. So here I'm going to write print. I'm going to print this out different signs question mark and then I'm going to print out this same this same code that we wrote here, but instead of A and B, I'm going to put in, change this with fun. So this is equal to fun, and this is equal to last value. So we're just, we're doing the same logic. We're just, instead of using A and B, we're using these variables that come up. And we're going to, we're going to run through this and see what this looks like. So now we, ha we have printed out even more information here, and we're going to say different signs, right? And it's asking whether these two values have different signs. And it says false, right? Which is true. 1.75 and 0 don't have different signs. So we're going to go through this for all of these and saying different signs. And then we find one, different signs is equal to true, right? Which is what happened. The last val the new value is negative and the last value is positive. This is exactly what we're looking for, right? If we see it go from negative to positive or positive to negative, we know that a root was in between those two values. So to make this a little bit easier to see, we don't know what the hours of math was yet. Let's add this in here. Hours of math. Ooh, not math. <laughs> it's not breaking bad. Print hours of math. And then what we're going to see here is, so hours of math was zero. This is what the result was. The different signs is false. And we're going to go through this. And I'm also going to add one more separator just to make things a little easier to read again, uh, just to make sure we're looking at the right thing. Uh, so. What we're doing here is we're going to print out hours of math. We're going to print out the new value, the last value, and then we're going to say whether they have different signs. So we wanted to find here, right? So hours of math equal to 0.4, and we saw that they had different signs, which means that the real value is between 0.3 and 0.4, right? So going up at intervals of 0.1, our approximate solution should be either 0.4 or 0.3, depending on which one's closer. But for our purposes, let's just take the last one. It's going to be close enough. It might not be the closest, but we could just take when this different signs is equal to true, when this actually happened, right? Okay, so this is what we're looking for right now. We have a lot of output here, so I'm going to I'm going to get rid of all of this, uh, except for this line of code, right? This is what we were looking for: is whether they were um, whether the two signs were the same, right? Now instead of having it here in a print statement, we can add it to this if statement. Uh, right um, as well right so what we want to do is if either two things can happen right either the fun value is actually at zero in which case we're going to do what we did before right where we found the exact solution we print out the hours of math and whatever or it goes from negative to positive or positive to negative and we're going to want to do the same logic right so the way that we're going to do this is we literally write the word or and then we can put this nasty looking guy into the parentheses, right? So this is just going to say whether they have different signs. So basically what this says is if the fun is equal to zero, which means we found the exact root, or this value and the last value have different signs, then this is going to be treated as a solution. It's going to print out all of this stuff. And I'm going to remove this part here now too. So basically what we've added is two things. We've added memory, which is this last value, and we set last value equal to fun. And then we've added this 
this Boolean statement, which is a true or false statement that is based on whether there's different signs. And if we find the different signs, we're going to use that as our approximate match. Okay, so I'm going to run this code and it finds two approximate matches, 0.4 and 4.7. Now, the way that this is going to be limited is by the precision at which we're checking, right? The number, the amount of numbers, the increments that we're going up are going to be how precise our our estimation is, right? So if we were to add a couple of zeros here and subsequently add them here to make sure we're looking at the same range, we're going to get a much higher degree of precision, right? So 0 0.7379 and 4.622. And we see the values of the fun are closer to zero than they were before when we just looked at it with uh, with one zero, right? So now here we have these things that are closer, that are uh, a little bit further away from zero. These are still approximate solutions, right? This isn't the exact root of their equation, but we are able to get very close within two decimal, within three decimal places relatively quickly by just searching through this. And now we can change these numbers at will a little bit, and we're going to be able to find a lot of different roots to a lot of different equations. Not all of them, see? So this might either have to do with the range, might have to do with a couple of things, but for the most part, we're going to be able to go through a whole bunch of these equations and we'll be able to find at a very high granularity an approximate solution for each of these. And notice that these, this fund is never equal to zero, meaning it's not able to find the exact solution, but it's able to find a very approximate one using this general methodology. Mm -hmm.